This time around, it's the turn of Windows 365 for business. What is it? How does it work? And what can it do for you? Greetings fellow YouTubers, Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP, as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. Well, it's been out for almost a month now, that's Windows 365, comes in two flavors of course, Windows 365 for business and Windows 365 for enterprise. In my last video I did a session on enterprise and I mentioned a couple of little issues with it. Typically you do need to have that on-premises infrastructure. Now, the, one of the cool things about the product, of course, is that you can integrate it with Microsoft 365 as well. Now, of course, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then please go ahead, click on that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff. Now, in this session, I'm going to really talk about Windows 365 for business. We'll talk about setting up. I'm going to talk about administering it. And also, as I said, how you can add on that Microsoft 365. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, whoa, Andy, if I start adding on different products, it's going to get really, really expensive. Well, I've discovered a few things. Actually, it's not too bad. Bearing in mind that you don't need the full-blown version of Office 365. You only need the lightweight versions because, of course, you're in a cloud PC. So it's perfect. So I'm going to talk about that. The other thing I thought I might look at as well is uh, accessing um, Microsoft 365, sorry, Windows 365 from an iPad or iOS or some kind of iOS device. How does that work? And ultimately, what is the experience like as well? Now, as always, I love your feedback. So if you've not uh, given me feedback before, then I would love it. And of course, please like and share. And if you've got any questions at all after the session, then pop them down below. So without any further ado, let's get to the demos. So my first demo is taking a look at setting up Microsoft Windows 365 for business. So here we are, I've navigated to windows365.com and here on the landing page I can sign in and I can also select uh, which kind of service that I want. So this is first of all the Windows 365 Cloud PC. Now really what does that mean? Um, well there are two options really. Um, you may have heard of another service that Microsoft run. Um, this is the Microsoft Virtual Desktop. Okay, and Virtual Desktop, you think, oh, it looks exactly the same. And you can see that you get 12 months of free service. That sounds very enticing, doesn't it? That's the good news. The bad news is they do that because you get a certain amount of credits. You get $200 worth of credit. Uh, and this is perfect for two days. So you get kind of the many of the free services, you get 200 credit for the kind of the, the core paid for services, such as virtual machines. And again, you also get some of the free services as well. Now, to be honest, some of these are great. Um, however, as most free things, if you want to kind of do anything serious with it, you really do need to pay. Um, so you can run Windows 10, Windows 11 um, on these machines, and here's the gotcha right away. Okay, so the gotcha on the virtual machines are that you get uh, X amount of hours for free. Okay, so with a virtual desktop, you're also charged for every time you run the machine. All right, so as the machine runs, it's clocking up bills for you. So obviously after your 12 months of free services or once you've used that credit that you've been credited for, then you're, you're really paying for everything. Um, so if your machine's on for three hours, you'll be paying for three hours. Now, compare that with Microsoft's cloud PC track. Um, as I've mentioned, the big difference here is you can leave this on perpetually. So there is no charge and it's just a flat fee per month. 
Now, um, you have two offerings, Windows 365 for business, which is the small business plan. And this is great for small businesses with no infrastructure on premises. And you already have, let's say, Azure Active Directory in the cloud. Windows 365 Enterprise, on the other hand, is kind of similar to the virtual desktop. Not that you have to pay for when you use it, but it does require an on-premises infrastructure. You heard that correctly. So if you've got Active Directory on-premises, you will need that because you need to configure the, con the networking components to your premises. Okay, so that's the gotcha there. So you can see I'm now logged in. And of course, here is my desktop. Now, the cool thing about this is you've got the choice. Do you want to open it in a browser? Now, this is perfect. You know, you can be anywhere, out and about. It supports a number of different browsers. I'm using Brave as a browser here. Again, it also you, uh, runs in um, Chrome uh, and also Edge browsers. So uh, I've done a little bit of trial and error with it. There's no issues at all. So the first thing you'll notice is, is okay, do you want to allow the room, uh, desktop to uh, um, gain access to local resources? So again, I can, yeah, that's fine by me. I can say, don't ask again, and I'm going to allow that. All right, so here is my uh, virtual machine. So again, I've now got my cloud desktop. You can see it comes uh, preloaded with a number of various apps and it's pretty responsive. So it's pretty good. Um, I can browse the internet on this. Um, so I can, you know, bbc.co.uk slash news. And you can see it's it's pretty pra it's pretty fast, even though you're actually browsing the internet in a Microsoft data center. So what about the admin tips then? Well, here in my portal, uh, let's take a look. First of all, up here on the top right-hand corner, you can see there's an option, and this is how you upload files into your machine. So if you're familiar with the likes of OneDrive or OneDrive for Business, you can click onto this and you can just upload files, no problem. The next one is if you want to pin this to your desktop. Again, this depends on the browser that you're using, of course. And I can, of course, go into full screen. So there you go. I'm now in uh, full screen there. And again, I can come back uh, if I want to. All right. Now, next one is your settings. So again, I can click onto the settings and you can see I've got um, usage reports or usage data. Now, just a just to let you know that this is nothing personal. There's no personal information involved. It's just purely analytical uh, data that's in here. Now, um, you can open resources in the file browser. Um, and a good bit of advice, by the way, is you may want to download the RDP client. So you can see that I've downloaded the remote desktop protocol already RDP and that means I can run the Windows 10 client within the remote desktop session in the little ellipse here you can see I can go into that and this is just really details about that whole uh, app experience so a common question that I get is okay Andy how do I administer this well, from a user perspective, you can see that I'm in my user portal here. And in my user portal, again, I can click onto this option. And this is very similar to the settings that you have in Microsoft 365. In fact, it is identical to the settings that you have in Microsoft 365. So I can literally type in portal.office.com uh, uh, and you can see it's logging me directly in to my Microsoft 365 account here. Now, you'll notice it's very limited because, of course, I've not got any Microsoft um, 365 licenses. And in fact, if I go into the admin center, it's exactly the same admin center. 
So you can see that uh, if, of course, if you've got Microsoft 365, you can bolt this on. So if I go into show all, you can see that you get some of the tools, you get Azure Active Directory, you get security and compliance, but these are limited, of course. Now, if I go into users and into active users, you can see at the moment, uh, I've got a device um, and I've also got the user here as well. Uh, and again, exactly like Microsoft 365, you can see that I can license the user. I've got exactly the same settings. So a common question is, Andy, uh, I would like to have Microsoft 365 attached. How can I do that? That's a great question. So what we can do is I can go into the billing area here. And if I go into purchase services, so in the purchase services option here, you can see you've got all the various, well, I've got my Windows for Business uh, here. Um, you can also see you've got Microsoft 365 and you can indeed, you can search for that. So if I go ahead and if I did a search for Microsoft 365, now you can see um, one of the things you've got like business premium, um, you've now the, the, just a bit of advice, the fact that you've got Microsoft 365 or Windows 365 rather means that you want this cloud PC. So you don't necessarily need a full blown version of um, Microsoft Office. So you don't need to pay that that heavy license. So one of the options that you could get is just the Office Apps version or even just the Business Basic, which just gives you email. And this is very, very low cost. So initially, what seems to be an expensive subscription is actually not too bad. Now you can, if I go into, let's say, a uh, details here, I can go into that details. And again, depending on where you are, you can also start a free trial. So, hey, I think fantastic. I'll just go ahead and I'll have a business basic and that now adds that on to my trial. I'll put in my uh, phone and of course it will then uh, confirm that and it will set that free trial up. So that's how you bolt licenses on. And of course, you know, you can add or you can remove uh, those settings as well. So the fact that all your users are in Azure Active Directory makes life a lot simpler. So again, assigning licenses in Windows 365 is identical to Microsoft 365. So I simply go into the portal here. You can see that I've got my user and just one thing as well with the global admin, I just set this up as a, as a demo account. Remember that administrator accounts do not need licensing. OK, so I can simply go into here. I can then scroll down. And if I go into things like my um, uh, licenses, so I can say, right, what products does my uh, user actually need? You can see at the moment I've uh, allocated that Windows 365 license. I've just got a single license at the moment. OK, this is just purely for demo purposes. So there you go, just to show you that Windows 365 and Microsoft 365 can be combined in a single portal. For the second of my two demos, I wanted to share with you my thoughts on running Windows 365 on an iPad. So here I am on my iPad and I've gone to the windows365.com uh, website. Now, um, I'm just using a, a standard iPad. I don't have an external keyboard. So I discovered that, yeah, the keyboard's gonna pop up. That's a little bit of a pain, to be honest. You kept having to move things out the way. I found it to be a little bit clunky. I later, however, tried it with an external keyboard, for example, an iPad Pro, and it was great. All right, so I log in, I get the same portal. You can see that I've got my cloud PC here and I can open, I've got a couple of options, of course. You can also download the RDP client through your app store. When I try and run the uh, 
the Windows 365 through a browser. You can see it works fine. Now you'll notice at the top, um, well, you might not notice it at the moment, but there are two options, one for a keyboard and one for the mouse. So moving it around was just, uh, you know, again, if you're using a standard iPad, just moving it around was a little bit, a uh, little bit clunky there. All right. Um, now, one thing that I would say that is once you downloaded, uh, you'll notice here it says get subscription URL. Um, so once you get that subscription URL, go ahead and then download the RDP client. Um, so once you've gone to the App Store, uh, download the RDP or the remote desktop. I would have said um, to be honest, this whole experience was so much better than just using the straight iPad in the browser. I also found that the um, in, in the browser, it actually crashed a few times as well, if I have to be honest. Whereas with the RDP client, once it was installed, um, I found it very, very slick and very, very easy to use. So um, I've gone ahead, I'm just going to switch over and I'm going to uh, use the RDP client. I'm adding a workspace and again, I'm just pasting that link in to my Microsoft 365 or Windows 365 PC. Of course, it will then ask me to put my credentials in. Again, a little bit clunky with the on-screen keyboard, but once it was put in, it wasn't uh, too bad at all, actually. Okay, so once you've uh, logged in and you've put in your credentials, I actually found the remote desktop particularly smooth. Now, of course, like all Windows 365 uh, logins, you need multi-factor authentication. So I'm in the virtual machine. One little annoyance is you keep having to put your username and password in a few times. That was a bit annoying. There was nowhere to save. I would have liked to have seen a save option here, Mr. Microsoft. Um, but needless to say, once you put in your password, you're in Windows. You have a full Windows 10 and soon to be Windows 11 desktop interface. And you can see at the top there that you've got the keyboard option. So you can switch between the navigation and you can also switch between keyboard settings. So there you go. That was just my, just a little experience of me working in Windows 10 um, on my uh, cloud PC. So there you have it, Windows 365 for business, the cloud PC. Isn't that cool? I really hope you enjoyed that session. Now, of course, I love your questions and your feedback. And if you haven't done so before, then please get those questions down below and I will do my very best to answer them for you. Uh, and as always, of course, if you've not subscribed to the channel, I would really appreciate if you could go ahead, click on that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. And and of course, please feel free to uh, share the, the content as well. So uh, that's it for today. I really appreciate you stopping by and hopefully you'll come by again. You stay safe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping by. Hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and click on the subscribe button and ring that bell and you won't miss a thing. See you next time.